everybody, this is Amy from Chateau de Rosière, and you haven't heard from us from a couple of weeks because the chateau was the site of some movie making and Mark was here alone whilst I was in the UK with the kids. But I'm back now and after an ill-advised cup of coffee, I have had a brilliant idea. And Mark's not here for me to discuss it with, so he's not going to have any choice in the matter. In fact, I might not even tell him it's happening. Uh, so shh, don't tell him. idea I've actually had two ideas both of them ill-advised but you know so the first one is um, I'm going to start a series of daily YouTube videos yes you've got that right the woman who can barely keep up with one a week is going to attempt to release a video a day I'm gonna caveat that and say it's a day a, uh, one a day during the week because the weekends I'm not gonna do it and they are gonna be a bit shorter but the reason for that is because we're having a major push on the coach house. I'm totally fed up with the fact that we're not in here yet. And later on, I'm going to introduce you to my secret weapon that is going to get us in here. Which brings me to my second brilliant idea, which is to ask you, how long should it take us to move into the coach house? I'm gonna let, today I'm gonna show you around I'm going to show you what needs to be done still before we can move in because there's a difference between being finished and having it ready to move in. I'm going to show you what we need to do and then I'm going to ask you how long you think it should take us and then I'm going to, okay, I'm not going to like promise with anything like my children's life or something but I'm going to do my absolute best to stick with the majority opinion on this and um, I've got a figure in my head that I think I know what it will take but I'll be interested to see what you suggest. So come with me on a little tour. So before I show you everything we have to do, I'm going to introduce you to my secret weapon. <laughs> this is Jason and Michaela. And um, we've talked a lot about how we don't often have volunteers here for various reasons. Um, the fact that they have to share a grotty bathroom with two small children um, and just it just not really fitting in with the way things work here. But then just occasionally stars align, people get in contact with us and we feel like we really need a push for something at that moment. And that's what happened. Mm -hmm. And these guys landed in our laps. <laughs> Lucky us. <laughs> yes. Yes. Tell them where you come from. Yeah, we're from Kansas City in the United States, and we have the good pleasure of spending the next few weeks here at uh, Chateau de Rosier with Mark and Amy. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's amazing, and you've been here a couple of days already. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't completely broken you yet, but <laughs> you know, getting there. Um, and so I'm going to take them around. Mark's out today, so they're in on my secret that I'm letting um, several thousand people that we don't know choose how are we organize our work <laughs> schedule. Um, <laughs> but Mark's not in on that. Um, and then, yeah, we're going to have a look around and you can give me your ideas on how long things are going to take as well. And then I'll get that in writing and signed. Oh boy, <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> and amazingly, it's great to have help with the kids as well. So we're kind of um, tag teaming it with the little kids and with, uh, with the work. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So this is a coach house. If you don't know anything about this, if you're new to the channel, we have a playlist um, called Coach House, helpfully, which will give you a tour of it, explain some of the work we've been doing so far, but boiling it down to a few seconds, this is the old coach house, clue is in the name, to the chateau that used to um, be ac accessed by the old road into the chateau. And it was almost completely derelict. It had four walls and a roof, but no internal walls and uh, the ground floor was completely destroyed. There was so It was the most derelict of all our buildings, I think, when we moved here. And we've done loads of work in the last few years to get it to this point. 
but we're really struggling to get over the bump to finish it. And the reason we need to finish it is because in order to start on the main works in the main chateau, uh, we need to finish this to move into here because small children and dust don't mix. In fact, anybody in dust doesn't really mix. And also lots of machinery. Clement has a penchant for machinery, just like his father, and a similar safety attitude. So it's a bit tricky to have them all together. So we want to move into this nice self-contained little unit for the two months it takes to renovate our entire chateau. Uh, <clears throat> two years. And hello, Pepper. And um, we've just got these few bits and pieces to finish now. We've been using the downstairs here as a kind of event space for ages, and this is gonna be where our main living area is. Uh, we'll have sofas and chairs, kitchen area, dining area. It's gonna be really great to just be in one big open space. The quirk of this building is that for its ultimate usage, we're gonna have um, this as a, partly an event space, but also for catering for the wider retreat center. Um, but it won't be connected to the top half because that will just be bedrooms for the, um, for the retreat centre. We never wanted to connect the two because uh, we never want to rent it out as a gîte or a holiday home or anything because it's so close to our own home. The downside of that when we're temporarily living in it is that we will have to go outside to go up. So we want to make sure that this main living area really is, it does have everything we need on a daily basis. And we already love spending time here. We spend so much time here. The kids' toys are here. There's a little swimming pool in the garden, tiny, tiny paddling pool. Um, so we have a lovely time here, but we have no um, amenities, which is what I'm going to show you now. Uh, this is one of the biggest areas we've got to work on. I've been showing Jason around and you'll remember, I'm going to link to all these videos throughout. I'll put a little link at the top here, here, here. I don't know where it comes up. Um, but you'll have yeah, here, here, somewhere will pop up links to uh, the videos where we've already done work. And this is where I plastered the toilet, the bathroom. Um, unfortunately, there's too much stuff in the way, so I can't show you right now. Um, where you remember I got thrown by spiders, nearly fell off the ladder, all sorts of things. Um, but then there's also, so we nearly finished with that. But there's also a sink area and there's a really fabulous project to do with the sink that I want to set Jason going with, um, which is a huge slab of uh, wood that we're going to use to make. Uh, we're going to put it on a, the top of an old dough box in here um, and then set a stone sink on it. We've got all of the bits. They just kind of need assembling and some work. <laughs> There's not enough room for Jason and I in there, so I'm going to send him in to show you. Um, Jason, the, the loo is through there, but this is the dough box. Do you know what a dough box is? Uh, no, I don't. It's what bakers used to use to prove dough in. Okay. And it's missing its top, but it's quite, um, it's quite nice, isn't it? Yeah. In there. And so we're going to use it as a table to place um, a big piece of wood on. And before we come out of here, I want to just show you the where the water's going to come out. Again, I can't quite get to it. It's this wonderful fountain that we found in a brocant um, whilst I was actually giving birth. Actually, that's quite a funny story. Jason had the great idea to pick it up and actually show you. <laughs> this is the water fountain. It's really nice. Yeah, it's really heavy though, isn't it? Yeah, probably 20 pounds. And whilst 15. I was in an exceptionally long labour with Clement, they... Um, let me go out of the hospital at one point. So obviously Mark and I went to a brocon and I actually had... <laughs> he's, fighting, he's fighting himself in the doorway, his reflection. I actually had a drip in my arm whilst I went to buy this. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's beautiful though, isn't it? Looks good, yeah. Leon is fighting his own reflection. So this is the piece of wood that's going to form the, um, what would you call it, the, the, base, the base of the sink, mm -hmm. yeah, where we put the sink on, the I, I can't even find the sink, yeah the counter, that's it, it's a huge, huge chunk of elm and Mark um, got it from his family home, 
uh, where they'd had a, a massive elm, hundreds and hundreds of years old, had fallen in a huge storm, mm -hmm. I think 20 or 30 years ago. And in order not to waste it, they cut it into planks and they've just been waiting there. And so Mark asked his sister um, if uh, we could have one. And so we're going to have a piece of history from Mark's family home here. That's awesome. So, uh, Michaela, this technically this is a project from the upstairs, but because it's down here, I wanted to show them. Uh, Michaela and I have already been trying to set this up, the clay workstation. We had to take it all down for the film crew, but now it's back up again. And how do you fancy making some clay tiles with me? I'm really excited about it. It's going to yeah. be amazing. And I think finally having some help with this, I might be able to knock out not just the tiles for the bathroom we're going to use, but the second one as well. Don't tell Mark that either, because he won't <laughs> believe me. <laughs> I'll work fast. But you've actually done some ceramics before, haven't you? Yeah, back in college I took a ceramics course, <laughs> which was a while ago, so yeah. <laughs> you know more than me, though. <laughs> this room, believe it or not, is going to be the kitchen. And it's actually going to be, ultimately it'll be a professional style kitchen. Um, but to begin with, uh, we're actually thinking of using it mostly as a storage space for when we live down here, having racks and um, uh, shelves. Anytime I forget words, don't hesitate to step in because my brain is completely fried. <laughs> and, but we will have, along that wall, we will have fridge, freezer, um, sink and dishwasher. And so this room is kind of one of those ones that doesn't need to be finished finished, but it would be nice if we could tart it up a bit. Um, and it's a problem that you're going to see around the whole place that there are unfinished edges and I'm not always sure how we're going to go about making them look finished and nice, mm -hmm. but that skylight is one of them, mm -hmm. um, apart from the spider webs so thick, they make me feel positively queasy um, there are some issues of that finishing that space mm -hmm. we also need cupboards on here and i don't think we need to be putting in the workspace work tops yet um, but i do think we need to have it all ready for when we do get to that stage yeah Sounds like a lot of work. Yeah, yeah. it's a small room. And it's, yeah. it's just, do you see what I mean? That when you come around, you walk in, you think, oh, it's nearly done. And then you start going, yeah, I just need to do that. And then I need to do that. And then I need to do that. And there's just these little the tiny jobs. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And they just, they take so long. Well, each one takes a day. Yeah. Um, so there's some pipes up there need boxing in. Um, we need mm -hmm. light fittings. Again, we could move in before that's finished. We've got two levels of finished, haven't we, really? Mm. Um, Acceptable and actually finished. <laughs> but I think at the very least, I'd like to paint this room. It needs, we're not gonna do any faffy plaster like we did in the other rooms because it's a utilitarian room and it's the plainer the better. So we do need to paint these walls. And I think that's achievable. Like yeah. just bright white, it'll brighten the room up a bit. And um, mm. yeah. maybe we need to, we're, we're looking at some auctions to get some, utilitarian style sinks and things and maybe one of those big dishwashers that you lift up and push things in mm. and stuff mm. for, for later. Okay, let's make That's this sweet. a kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> you might remember back in an old video, I stopped recording because I could hear crunching coming from this beam up here. And I haven't heard it since, but I think it's quite important before we move in that we get that treated. We also have to find um, light fittings to put around these bare light bulbs. Again, it's another one that's not going to stop us moving in, but it's going to be lovely if they're actually finished. And this area here is going to be our sort of semi-kitchen diner. We have all the equipment hidden underneath, or the facilities hidden underneath this table to have um, sinks and kitchens and stuff in here. Um, because this, the idea had been that this would be a sort of front kitchen for a cafe where you have a nice looking cooker and a nice looking counter and a coffee machine and stuff. And that you keep the, the sort of restaurant style equipment out the back. So we're going to try that out a bit when we live here, I think. Um, and my idea is we move this, which is an antique from Mark's family, over there and replace that shelf. And we put in a cooker here, a dining table here, and some and the coffee and tea stuff here. So 
we've got some this is the bit i'm really excited about is working out how we're going to decorate this whole area um uh, but i need to fix a few things first uh, mark the master of priorities has decided that his obsession in here is these shutters as well these are the original shutters and they look a bit grim my feeling is we could still live in here with them like this but he has it in his head that we need to sand them and oil them to look beautiful and inevitably he'll be right and they'll look lovely and they'll be the thing that makes the room look wonderful <laughs> so i'm gonna go along with his idea on that one um, especially because i haven't told him about the competition to let other people decide how long it takes to renovate this place another little problem we have here is that this is the bedrock and these are the tiles and those are the walls and there has been some slight leakage from the outside and uh, some mold growing there and we're going to have to think of a solution for that as well which might involve doing some work outside okay. so if you remember and you'll probably see if you watch the tour video again the the ground outside actually comes down like this so this bit is buried and it wouldn't have always been like that and part of our landscaping plan eventually is to reinstate the old levels outside but that's a bit far in the future so one of our options is to dig a trench along the side and put some more drainage in we had hoped over the winter that the residual heat of we've had the underfloor heating on since we connected that up might dry it out but it hasn't quite so we have to work out whether we want to live with that it's not mold there's nothing dangerous it's just a bit of moss from the damp coming onto the rock. There is no mould. <laughs> I know that people will ask me about mould. There is no mould. This is the front garden of the coach house. And it's, again, you'd think, oh, it's not necessary to do landscaping before we move in here. But it is quite important to have a space that we can contain the children in because they'll be much closer to some slightly more dangerous bits of the garden like ponds and um, walls and one of the peacocks that likes to attack them um, so we need to have a thought about how we're going to fence this area in whether we need to do any landscaping before and um, yeah whether we want any garden furniture which I think would be a really good idea because I'm fed up of sitting on hard wooden seats outdoors all the time This is a job I think you might enjoy. Uh, these are very old steps and um, they've become a bit overgrown and obviously we're up and down them a lot and I don't want people to start tripping on the weeds. So how do you feel about weeding these oh, steps? I would love that. It'd be really cool to uncover them. It looks, it's one of those jobs that is quite satisfying because there's a huge transformation from start to finish. But I think it could really help the rest of us when we're coming and going. And it means you're outside with um, some rather lovely views. Yeah, I love that idea. Let's do it. <laughs> awesome. You have to make sure all the things I want to incorporate. Yeah. We have no idea what the future looks like. <laughs> no, 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 no. There's all these details of the <laughs> possible <laughs> you'll all be very familiar with this room because it's where we've done lots of our experiments and lots of our work it's the first bedroom upstairs and um there is so much work i keep thinking oh we've just got to finish plastering it and paint a little bit and then i look and i think oh maybe we need to do that so i'm just going to give you a quick rundown and another day we'll go into it in more detail but there has to be, the panelling has to be finished on this, as it goes around the corner and into the bathroom. Mm -hmm. The plaster has to be finished. We need light fittings. Um, I'm obsessed with the gap between the plasterboard and the stone walls. I think it looks unfinished and awful. Mark doesn't see it, but that's my passion. Um, we need um, to box in the um the pipes there what do you call them they're the heating regulators like the coming yeah the plumbing yeah. yeah we need to sort out the um electricity sockets and then we need some sort of curtains or blinds we need to finish the doors we need door handles 
um, and then we need to furnish it. Just a few things. That's all. Yeah. Really? <laughs> You come in and you think, I'm nearly finished. Well, comparatively, we've nearly finished from where we started, but actuality is a bit different. Mm. Yeah, every bit gets you closer, though. Yeah. You know you're not allowed to leave till it's done, don't you? <laughs> 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 Get away! <laughs> um, this is the really tiny bathroom, and I, f I feel like this is the one we're going to use the most because it's the one with the bath and, the and a shower, not just a shower, which we need, and we need the bath for the kids. You might be wondering where that bath is right now. <laughs> um, it, this bath is in your future. Um, and it's we have an antique three-quarter size bath. It's all that would fit in here. Mm. But it needs restoring. Ah, that's good. <laughs> that's good. That's good. That's good. Excellent, that's the answer I wanted. Um, and this, Michaela, is also our special project for the tiles mm. that we're moving on to yeah. in here. And Mark has to just finish some of the panelling. And there's just some bits and pieces around the edge. There's the edging of the, um, the plasterboard, plaster mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, we also need to decide what colour to paint it. And the panelling is going to be painted as well in both rooms. In here, it will be a, a watertight one mm -hmm. uh, paint, and that side not, but hopefully the same colour. So, yeah, a tiny room, not tiny tasks. <laughs> 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 This is the second bedroom, um, and again, it's kind of, I'd always had in my mind, we didn't need to finish it because as long as we've got one bedroom, we're all right. But it would be really amazing if we could, and with some of the, well, all of the tasks are identical in both rooms, essentially, apart from this one doesn't have an antique bath to restore, <laughs> but it does have more tiles to make. So um, I think once we start on a certain project in that room, we'll then just continue and do it in here. Um, that makes sense. Okay. I think so, doesn't it? So yeah. sort of the panelling and the filling the gaps around the edge of the plasterboard and painting and things. Once we've got kind of choices, it makes sense to just continue through. Yeah. Um, and then it means it's done and we don't, the kids can have a separate room. Um, we might actually get some sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the other bathroom, there's no window in here, it's smaller even than the other one, so there's no room for a bath, but we would compensate by having a nice big shower and I want to do really bright decor in here, we probably won't do wood panelling, we'll keep it simple, but we'll do a really nice big um, uh, tile display in this one. Nice. Lots of tiles. Yeah. <laughs> so, what do you think, people? Having met the fabulous Jason and Michaela and heard my ideas, do you think uh, we can a produce daily, weekly, weekday? daily videos uh, for you of what we're doing and how long do you think it's going to take us? Um, I do have my own ideas, um, I'm going to write it on a piece of paper and then show you at the end and uh, I think, you know, it could be a fun project to get the hive mind to decide how long we should dedicate to this to move in and more seriously, I'm just super fed up of living in a building site. Um, whilst the film crew were here, some things were moved out of different rooms and they were piled up and we have furniture stacked in different places. And um, Mark decided sensibly it would be a chance to do some work in one of the rooms. Um, but living in the middle of that is just too much for me now. <laughs> Um, I, can't, I can't do it anymore. I just want to move in here. I want to live in a nice, finished house for a while with little kids and um, not have to step over things, be able to find things um, whilst we actually sort out our future forever home in there. And I don't rightly know how it happened that Michaela and Jason came here right now, but um, I think they are the perfect fit. They're absolutely lovely. Um, they fit in so well already. Uh, we also have our friend Dave staying with us for a moment and he's helping us out with some things. And I think it feels like the time 
to make a push to get there. Um, and in a way, if I put the pressure of us filming all of this in a certain amount of time, it gives us something to focus on and to uh, prioritise above other tasks. Uh, because of course there's an awful lot going on outside at this time of year as well that Mark's taken up with. So me having Michaela, Jason and Dave to help out means that I can really focus on this and have help whilst Mark is pulled out on the outdoor tasks. Um, it'd be really great if you could um, like each video and subscribe if you haven't already because half the people who watch our videos aren't subscribed and it really helps us to um, get promoted by YouTube the more subscribers we have, uh, which gives us more revenue, uh, which helps us with our projects and helps us to tackle even more ambitious projects. Um, and uh, don't forget that we've got our new channel, The Lost Gardens of Chateau de Rosière, which is focusing on the work that's going on outside and on the estates and on the massive self-sufficiency project we've got going on here, beautiful gardens. It's been picking up great speed. Um, we really enjoyed doing that and um, we hope you'll join us on both channels. Thank you for watching.